Well, it isn't true, is it? Maureen, is that the father of Claire's baby? Yes, he is. Oh, my God. Time Emmy Awards, guiding light for outstanding leading actress and best supporting actor as the world turns for best juvenile actor, the young and the restless for outstanding ingenue, supporting actress and for best dramatic series. Congratulations to CBS Daytime. Station, you become grateful for every breath you take. And by the time we found Claire, she was at the end of her rope. Fletcher was missing. She didn't know where she was. She was frantically trying to find him. So Ed went off to, to look for him with her, and I stayed behind at the bar. And suddenly this Lebanese woman came running in, and she had found Fletcher. So before I knew it, I grabbed Ed's medical bag, and I ran out after her, and we found him in the graveyard. In the graveyard. We were trying to make our way out of there, when the barrage hit. Lillian, it was a sound noise that you've never heard. It was death. So Fletcher threw me into an open grave. We both huddled in there. I was so afraid. I don't even remember how afraid I was. It was death. We didn't think we were going to make it, but we did. So the next day, they found bodies in the graveyard. Men and women. Bodies were burned beyond recognition. They found Fletcher's passport. They found Ed's medical bag. And somewhere in the rubble, they found my wedding ring. I don't know how it got off my hand. But Ed and Claire thought that Fletcher and I were dead. And Ed and Claire had no one to comfort them. There was no comfort. There was no hope. And they had lost the two people dearest to them of this world. So they comforted each other. And they loved each other. And they gave life. Through all that death. So you see, Lillian, there was no seduction, there was no betrayal, there was no infidelity. So there cannot be any blame. You've been through so much. You shouldn't have to go through anything more. And that's why I have to put a stop to these rumors. I've got to stop out these rumors. How? Call a meeting. Just call a meeting. Lillian, tomorrow I want the entire staff gathered at Four West. Again. Did you tell the makeup man to meet me in the studio? Mm -hmm. Good.
fashions provided by Lily Rubin Salon South Southwest and Barney's. Jewelry by Stephen Dweck. Yes, I assure you, I plan to stay right on top of the scandal at Cedars. Well, it's good to know I have the support of concerned citizens like you, Mrs. Howard. Uh, thank you for calling. Well, well, if it isn't the notorious Fletcher Reed. None other. You here on a social call, or you here on business? A little of both. I see. I wanted to talk. Be my guest. As one journalist to another, I need a favor. from recovery, all right? Check that hour later. Yeah. What's this? Well, Maureen Ma has called a meeting with all the staff. You're kidding. What for? Well, you'll see, but the important thing is to have a large attendance. Give me one of these. I'll post it in the cafeteria. I can put one in the nurse's lounge. Great. I have some extras over here on the desk. Oh, good. I wonder what's so important at the rates in emergency meeting. I got a pretty good idea. What? Just be there. Personally, I wouldn't miss it for the world. Yeah. Maureen. Hi. Did you get my message about the meeting? Yes, I saw the bulletin. I don't think it's a good idea. Claire, something has got to be done about the gossip because the whole hospital is caught up in it. I know, Maureen. <laughs> they are boring a hole into my skull every time I walk by. Believe me, I know. I'm distracted, too. Well, there you see there. I mean, we've got to clear the air. Otherwise, this is all going to paralyze Cedars. Yes, I understand, but this is not the way to do it. You can't just drag everything out into the open and cause a scandal and ruin reputations, Maureen. Well, what do you expect me to do? Just let, let it run its course? No. I'm going to resign. There's going to be talk. Your pregnancy is not the issue here, Claire. You are an exceptional surgeon. Don't you give up your career because of gossip. I, I need you. I don't see any other alternative, Maureen. I can't function as a doctor if the people I'm working with have no respect for me. They do respect you. Your personal life is none of their concern. Oh, that sounds great in theory. What do you want to hear what I'm dealing with? Do you want to hear what I'm dealing Tell with? Tell me what you're dealing with. Fine. Though. Example, this morning I had to reprimand a nurse for a sloppy bandage dressing. She walked out of the room, mumbling Hester Prynne. It's not funny, Maureen. I know it's... <laughs> Sorry. Oh, jangled nerves. <laughs> Claire, listen, I know what a fighter you are. I'm not going to let you throw in the towel on this one. I can fight a fair fight, Maureen, but when my opponent plays dirty... Charlotte Wheaton. Oh, yes, Charlotte Wheaton. Wheaton. She's the one. Charlotte Wheaton. She is out to get Ed no matter what it takes. Well, all the more reason for you to stay, right? Listen, Claire, don't you give up your career because Charlotte Wheaton has dragged you... So, if Fletcher's vasectomy works, there's no way he could be the father. Yeah. Fletcher Reed, no, get rid of him. I've had it with you, Alicia. Charlotte who? You know who I mean, the Weasel of Four West. Hospital has a mascot now? Oh, come on, Alicia. What's that, a love letter? This is a message slip with Charlotte's name on it. Well, perhaps you should give it to her. Why? I found it in your wastebasket. And you accuse me of going through other people's garbage. What about it, Alicia? Well, maybe it's one of my fans. 
I have so many. <laughs> One of your informants, you mean. I'm curious. Do you still have fans now that you're out of the limelight? Alicia, I heard you and Charlotte scheming on the phone last time I was here. You're eavesdropping. The Didn't your mother teach you any manners? Yeah, yeah, okay. The point is, I know Charlotte is the one who's been giving you the dirt on the Bowers. Enough dirt and pretty soon you'll have a mountain. I also know one or both of you stole my records from the fertility clinic. What's a big, strong man like yourself doing at a fertility clinic anyway? I thought you'd solve that problem. Listen, do us both a favor and drop the cutes. If you're still having trouble, maybe I could help you out. Okay. Act dumb. It suits you. Just remember this. You are interfering with the reputations and the careers of two of the most respected members of the Cedars medical staff. And you're interfering with the most trusted reporter on the WSPR staff. Not much of a station, is it? Give it up, Fletcher. If you think I'm going to blow this story, you've been out to pasture too long. You wash your hands of this vendetta. Or I will see to it personally that you and Charlotte are brought up on felony charges, larceny for stealing my medical records. <laughs> you can't prove we stole a thing. I don't have to. The minute you go public, it's like admitting that you receive stolen property. <laughs> then the station will just have to defend me. Unless they fire you first. Even an ace reporter like yourself knows they're going to have to stand behind me on principle. Yeah, what principle? Remember the Pentagon Papers? Gotta defend those First Amendment rights. Then I guess I'm just gonna have to get my records myself right now, then. <laughs> Not a chance. Yeah? You just watch me, Let's sweetheart. Stop it! Let you leave my desk alone! Get! Maureen? You have a minute? Yeah, what's up? Ed didn't show up for work this morning. You know where he is? I have no idea. What do you mean? He shouldn't have gone off alone like this, Claire. He probably just... No, no, he's alone. a wreck inside. What if he starts drinking again? No, he's not going to drink. Well, I can't be so sure about that, can I? You're going to have to trust him. Oh, <laughs> where have I heard that before? Listen, have you talked to Fletcher since yesterday? No. Why? We found out who Alicia Romer's source is. Who? I'll give you three guesses. The first two don't count. Charlotte. Charlotte Lee. The Bowers may have won yesterday's battle. But I'm winning the war, and they don't even know it. Someone said, revenge is a dish best served cold. Mm. How delicious to get mine after all this time. Easy Ed doesn't even remember the time he diverted funds earmarked for my nurse's postgraduate grant. Stole them for his precious intern program, starring the beautiful Dr. Claire Ramsey. One's a know-it-all, the other's a have-it-all. Well, they can kick me out of their party, try to kick me out of their hospital, but they can't escape the facts. By the time I'm finished telling the truth, the Bowers' charmed lives won't be worth hanging on a charm bracelet. If the idiots who work here won't listen to me, I'll have to have more help from the people who do. Harry's always there for me. I've made sure of that. He's so eager. I have to laugh. And Alicia's invaluable, no matter how annoying she is. So, now it's time to get to work on my next recruit. Darlene! Yeah. Hey, what's this, late lunch or early tea time? We have to have a talk. Sure, about what? What happened that day in OR with Dr. Bauer? Charlotte. Dr. Bauer was drunk, and you know it as well as I do. What about him? They entrust their lives to this man. Yes, hundreds have, and they're all grateful to him. He'd be my first choice. Even after the way you saw his hands shaking in that operation? That was very tricky surgery. 
Imagine what would have happened if his hand had slipped. All right, he was tired. The man is professional enough to realize it and turn it over to Ramsey. That's what she's there for. Did you say your sister's being admitted next week for elective surgery? Yes, I did. To be done by Dr. Bauer? Mm-hmm. Well, I hope he recovers from his latest binge before he cuts on her. What binge? Didn't you hear? Dr. Bauer didn't show up for work today. No, I didn't hear. Canceled all of his appointments and his elective surgery for next week. Did he say why? Oh, no one knows. That's odd. I know why. I can see you were dying to tell me. Why? Skull. As I was saying, the subject for today's uh, show is one that needs to be taken very seriously, and that is journalism. Most of you know that is a field that I have a lot of respect for. Uh, what Fletcher is not telling you is that his own war correspondence got him a nomination for a Pulitzer Prize. Well, at any rate, uh, we'd like to draw your attention to a different kind of war, and that is sometimes referred to as the battle for men's souls. And of women's souls, and children, too. The truth, and the journalists who report it, sometimes come under attack from our present hey. governments. Oh, you know the Maureen Fletcher were doing this? Listen. But no threat no. is more no. damaging to journalists. Back. They are tearing Alicia Romer's credibility to shreds. Great. <laughs> Won't do any good. Why? Why do you say that? She beat them. What? Punch. As promised in an earlier report, I have an update on the Cedars Hospital scandal. Now, you'll recall there were allegations of alcoholism, promiscuity, and cover-ups at the highest levels of this once splendid institution. Tonight, it is my sad duty to confirm that for the physician who, who attempted to operate while under the influence of alcohol journalism. was none other than the former Why, chief Fletcher of staff. Why, going straight to Roma's jugular. There's no contest, Louis. What do you mean? Look, just keep watching. Alicia's going to nail Dr. Ed, but good. Yeah? And scandal distorts our values, making us see the bad in our neighbors instead of the good. And as they say in some schools of journalism, good news is no news. Yeah, the kind of news that Alicia Romer is raking up, unfortunately, it makes it see the worst in all of us. Yeah, and that affects even yours truly, Fletch and Moe. It's human nature. Yeah. We all feel very guilty about watching it. It's the kind of entertainment that demeans the the viewing audience, as well as the woman broadcasting it. So, the next time Alicia Romer darkens your television screen with her particular brand of petty gossip about your friends and your neighbors, just let WSPR know how you feel about Alicia Romer. Do what Fletch and Moe do. And change the channel. Right. And believe me, WSPR will get Curiously the message. Enough, and hopefully we'll get the kind Cedar's of responsible journalism seems reluctant to take action on this matter. Well, perhaps it's not so curious, considering Cedar's chief administrator is Maureen Bauer, the wife of the offending surgeon. Now, we can only sympathize with this brave lady's torment, as her sense of professional duty wrestles with her sense of wifely loyalty. A loyalty which is no doubt badly tested by her husband's particularly close relationship with his fetching protege, Dr. Claire Ramsey. How long will this cover-up continue? Not forever, if we can help it. And we must help it. For beyond this sad story of human frailty and deceit, there are far-reaching implications for you and your loved ones. Now, if you care about the quality of health care in Springfield, let us know what you think about our coverage. And together, Tom, we'll Tom, could you please turn this off? Hey. And everybody, I'd like you back at work, all right? Meanwhile, Go back to work. keep tuning I don't know what Fletch and Moe are going to say to top that. I mean, Chief Wilmer really hung him out to dry. <laughs> you hit pretty close to home, all right. Oh, do I have to believe all that? Charlotte, you're not very proud of us. What do you mean? I mean, I'm, I'm sorry I ever let you introduce me to that awful woman. She's just doing her job. Oh, yeah, sure. Making me tell her things that are really none of her business. Come on, Darlene, you know you did the right thing. Oh, boy, I hate to think of what's going to happen to Dr. Bauer now. Meanwhile, keep tuning in for more Romer About Town. That is Charlotte's dirty work, Ed. You know, at least Maureen and Fletcher give people who use their brains something to think about. They did damage her credibility, don't you think, Ed? I just cannot believe she can get away with something like that. Stop it. 
Claire, stop. She can't prove a thing, Ed. Oh, come on, Claire. It's time to face the facts. My career as a doctor is over. Here. What? A uh, show. Yeah, well, we gave it our best shot. Your best ever. Um, want to come watch the phones come light on. up? Later, Lex, huh? Yes. Huh? What the... Uh, well, I just hope we did more good than harm. Don't worry about it. We sure did, because WSPR is going to think twice about it before they let Alicia Romer sling any more money at us. True. The only way to stop an attack like that is to head it off, right? Protection reaction strike. What? That's Pentagon talk. I mean, stick it to them before they stick it to us. Yeah. I just, I just don't want Ed and Claire hurt anymore. Maureen, don't worry. Don't worry. As long as we stick together, keep this pressure up, Alicia and Charlotte won't dare go 